Hiya, um, long time no see. Um, I thought I would just jump on because it's, it's a good week and a bit now, I think, since I've last posted anything. Um, been so busy with lots of lovely orders, so thank you very much, guys. Um, but I wanted to get this finished, which was my um, my second attempt at a ring-bound journal. Now, the first ring-bound journal we did as um, the new... Um, uh, the, the children's kit, the mini zebra's kit. Um, so that was my first attempt at using this thing. Um, and I'm now addicted to it. So this is my next one. This is going to be a fairly plain journal, I think. Um, but I thought I might as well just bring you along whilst I sort of construct it and put it together. I've taken two pieces of board. I can't remember how much I explained previously about this, but I've taken two pieces of board and they measure about nearly six and a half by by just over eight um so you can kind of get the idea of the the size of the journal um i've backed them in uh some really old ledger paper and then i've lined them with sheet music um i've punched them with my machine and then i've grabbed a whole bunch of different papers that i've punched as well lots of vintage papers in this lots of um really nice cream tone so I'm going to leave this one quite plain but I do want to do a little bit of stitching and then just fill a few pockets I think so I thought I would bring you along with me my next thing I'm going to make then is um I decided to make a Halloween journal but using a kit which is something I don't often do I have to say I tend, I tend not to use digital kits very often um but I'm gonna this time because I don't have a massive stash of Halloween stuff so that's my next thing so I'm just moving some bits out of the way I've just got a really, really good eBay purchase of loads of vintage um, newspapers as well and documents that have turned up. So we'll be playing with those later. So I've got my covers, I've got my pages. Many of them are just I've sort of cut down to size, so we're just going to leave those ones quite plain, I think. Um, so these are going to be plain. This is cut down to size. This one I've left a bit longer. Let me get one of my thingies as a, as a template so this one I've left a little bit longer so he's going to need um trimming a little bit now I don't know if it's going to be thick enough to use as a pocket I might have to just line it a little bit or maybe just a little flip perhaps if I just put that down you see it's quite thin so I might just line that with something just see what I've got knocking about I do have my one of my tag trays here and I do have some coffee dyed tags in this so maybe we could use that so you've got a, so it flips out as a little writing spot but it's just sort of strengthened perhaps I don't know what do you think so I do have the guest checks I could use to trim down and line it with it's just a little bit a little bit short aren't they um what shall i do with that i don't really want to just leave it because i think it is going to tear so i think i'm going to trim this tag down i'm going to do that and just line it i might just trim the page as well so it works out the same height and we i think we can do that without um without losing any of the text so let's do that with this one Put my tags back So I hope everybody's all right. Can you believe it's October already? It's my youngest daughter's birthday on Saturday. So we've got a huge, very busy, if that's my printer going, if you can hear that in the background, we've got a huge party, um, software party we're having on Saturday. So she's really excited. Um, she will be five, bless her. Probably have marked this, shouldn't I really, rather than wittering on. So let's just trim. Where's my pencil gone? That's a pen, but that'll do. So I'm just going to trim a line there and then we'll re do the edges of this. And I think that will work. Yeah, it's going to be a busy old weekend this weekend. Um, we're going to go to buy her birthday presents after school today. Me and uh, me and her dad, not 
me and her, that would ruin everything. Um, so just her and my other girl are going to Nana's for tea, which will be nice. There we go, that kind of, oh, I didn't trim this thing. Oh, Donna. Just take this down a little bit. That is a pencil. Yeah, I do want it to fit quite exactly actually on here. So I haven't really got an idea of what I was jumping on to do today really. I mean it's it's a bit late in the day for, for sort of starting a new project so I thought I might as well get this one finished. Um, I'm going to just use my art glitter glue just to hold this in place. And then I'm going to stitch around it. Um, and then I think that'll be quite a cool flip out. Now, do I want it? Put that away. You might have noticed as well I've moved over a little bit. I've rearranged my room so I've got stuff under my desk now. So I've had to move up the desk. So my computer and stuff is still that side. And the guillotine and everything is still that side. So I've just sort of shifted along. But I always get this in the way. Can you see this bit? This is, where's my finger? This is part of the mechanism that holds the camera together and I can always just kind of see it in the background. It really bugs me. I need a new camera set up. I keep saying this and never quite get to it. Yeah, I think I'm going to put it on the inside. Um, so I'm just going to do just a bit of glue top and bottom and the sides to hold it in place. But bearing in mind, I'm gonna be stitching there in a sec, so I don't go right to the edge because I don't wanna ruin my needle. Bob that on. That, yeah, that feels better already. So let's grab the machine and just put the pencil on the start. Oops. Right, where can you see? That's better, isn't it? Okay. So I'm going to go for a long straight stitch. The cat's not under the desk today, so I can get to the pedal properly. start the top right when I'm stitching tags I don't know why see the people always start down here at this bottom left but I know it's like a weird habit I've got I'm sure there's a proper reason for it it's just do the corners yeah I'm all about these ring bound uh, journals at the minute it's so different from what I'm used to making off the edge there. No, right. Ooh, sorry about that. There we go. So that's my stitched page, and then we can decorate the outside of that. So I've lost my slipper as well. Right, so that's that one. Let's see if I can kind of get a bit half and half going. The lighting's really bad as well. It's that time of year, isn't it? Um, so I think I might do a bit of decoration here, or I might leave, I don't know, I'm, tr I'm trying not to over decorate because I want whoever gets the journal to be able to do their own bits to it, but I think that just kind of gives a bit of a, an extra something, doesn't it? Right, then I've got, what else have we got page-wise? I've got a vintage receipt, which I kind of, I mean again, super flimsy, but I'm just going to leave that as something just to to fold out, um, it's from 1936 for a dressmaker um, in Swindon. I love stuff like that. So I think we'll just leave that. I don't know if you saw that then, sorry. I keep forgetting the bloody camera's on. I just talk to myself. Um, then I have some vintage wallpaper. If anybody who's bought one of my kits might recognize this. I quite often shove this in the, the kits. So yeah, I definitely want, a bit of a pocket with this and I'm gonna just yeah I'm just gonna run a stitch down either side and then I'm gonna I'm gonna straighten that for a start blimey 
Where's the trimmer gone? So we'll just neaten that off so that's nice and straight. It's never seen straight, this. My word, Donna. I don't think there's anything I can do about that either. A bit better. Right. So let's just run... Start there actually, we'll run a stitch along, along and along, if that makes sense. Just find it gives it a bit more stability. a little pocket that's a nice pocket page yep cool next i have one of these now i did trim that to fit so i like that so that's getting left as it is the same with this one with the big butterfly page and um some sort of honeysuckle on the back a couple of um avocado dyed pages i've got I really, I just really liked that. That's from an Enid Blyton book and I just really liked the little cat on it. Do you see? Yeah, I like that. It's quite Halloween-y actually. So yeah, I'm gonna leave that in. Um, now, this is a super long page that I thought could just be a bit of a, a flip out rather than a pocket page. So that could be handy. So that's just gonna stay like that, I think. Um, this one is from uh, a 70, I think it was like a 1970s book for boys like you used to be able to get and I've cut it, something sticky on my desk here, I was uh, making collage tags last night for an order and I feel like I've got half the matte medium on my desk. Um, yeah, I wanted to just kind of leave this like a wee pocket so I've purposely cut so you can see the people. And I think if I were to do that, and again, just sort of trim. That doesn't leave it particularly. I wonder if that's going to be strong enough and not get battered. Because I really like the edging there. Hmm, what do you think? I mean, I could put some tape on it to strengthen it underneath. Should we try that? Should we get some masking tape? No. I have some. Yeah, I do. I wonder if I could just put a little bit there just to just strengthen the pocket a bit. Just as near as I can get it without properly ruining it. Might just stop it from completely tearing. I know it's not quite to the edge, but shall we see I don't know why I thought that was going to work all right so we've got a bit nearer there and just a little smidge at this side better yeah this is the uh, the halloween kit that i've got that's just printing at the side so we'll do that next i'm hoping this is going to be just a bit like so a bit of a, a craft along video nothing too strenuous so i'm just going to stitch this here just to stitch top and bottom i'm not going to go mad and stitch 
here. And then that's another little pocket page. Yeah, like that. Um, get my template back, my cover. So the next I've got a vellum page, which is slightly too long again. But I think what I might do is just tear the edge of that with my tearing ruler. Because I just like, I do like a torn edge. And that'll just make that fit down. Give it a little bit of interest, you see, with the torn edge. And that'll fit nicely. And that will go in the scrap bin. And do not waste. So these are some... Um, slightly thicker um probably 120 160 gsm um paper slash thin card um that i just cut down it's coffee dyed and that can go in as well as i say quite a few plain pages in this one i've got an old um algebra page or indeed two algebra pages with this i'm going to need to cut them in half aren't i because otherwise that's going to tear when we got to open it, it's going to sort of pull, isn't it? Um, it's just how I've um, dismantled the book there. Get rid of those. Okay, so a couple of algebra pages there. That's an old French um, book page. This is a nice botanical page now. Lost my colour again. Again, I was going to do something with it. I don't really know what. I don't think I want another pocket. I think I might just leave that as a bit of a flip. And then it can be used as and when. However somebody needs it. Just need a bit of a trim at the back just to make sure it doesn't catch on the binding wire. Um, another one, this one's a little bit plainer, so maybe we will have a bit of something with this one. there maybe I have got a pile of bits and pieces I was working on earlier and I've got some embossed papers I could make maybe a bit of an embossed pocket on that side Being vintagey let's see turn you so you can see what I'm doing just probably missed half of that um, yeah, some little embossed papers. Some more, it's a couple of times. Some coffee paper. What about the green? Yeah, should we do like a little green pocket? Yeah, let's do a little green pocket. So, we want to about that. don't want a massive pocket but something like that again scraps bin um let me pull it out a little bit there we are make you busy um i'm gonna put a little thingy in find my thingy machine there we go middle is about there ish yeah, those bits I chuck them, not that bad. Um, measured that well, didn't I? Uh, let's... It doesn't matter. Let's bob this down with a bit of glue first. Not so far ever. And then I'll just run a stitch around it.
checking on nothing offensive on anything. I thought I saw a slightly dodgy word, but perhaps not. Right, okay. Let's uh we just have to be careful of these things, don't we? Can you see what I'm doing? There we are, so we'll just stitch around this pocket. So hopefully that'll be nice and strong. Yeah, it's quite a thick paper is this one. So it should be alright. probably look really weird then that's because I was looking through the camera rather than at the real life version so <laughs> couldn't quite judge so that's cute little pocket little flippy thingy like that um, I have some handmade paper that hasn't thingied at all has it that was uh, a bit of a duffer so let's redo this oh this is an opportunity to show you how to, to uh, punch them so on the side of our machine just for anybody who's considering getting one on the side of the machine it says open continuous cover and inner pages and these are uh, are um relating to this little slider here where's the camera gone that side so you move these along in accordance to what you want now to start with um i'm doing inner pages so i want to start on a d it sets the hole for the first one of these ever so, it, so start again donna let's do this for a start when you Peter, punch your cover. <laughs> I haven't been drinking, honestly. When you punch your cover, um, you use the cover option and it sets your um, punches slightly inverted in from the edge of your cover. When you punch your inner pages, rather than lining the edge of the page up right there, it will set your holes ever so slightly further down, forcing your page ever so slightly further down. Um, so it means that not everything's going to be sort of right up to the edge. It gives it a nice little border, just a bit more of a professional finish, I think. So we will start with um, D because we, it's an inner page that we're doing. You kind of have to, now we'll zoom in. In fact, let me swing the camera around. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Give me one minute. Right, let's forget the sewing machine for a second. So, um, when you move this, you have to kind of push down and push. Now, I've lost a thumbnail doing this once. So, kind of push down and slide. And you can see the arrow, where are we? There, on the top is pointing to D. Can you see that? Which means I'm about to punch the inner pages. The punches themselves are in here, and obviously you push the handle down. Can you see? and out they come to punch your paper. So when I put my piece of paper in, and I'm going to, I'm just going to trim that edge because I want it to be straight. I think this is the thing. If your edge isn't completely straight, it's going to, I mean, your holes are wonky and then your page is going to be wonky. So this is going to be the back of the page where we're punching. I'm going to put it in and I'm going to push it right up to this end here. Can you see? So my paper, is already the, the first hole that's going to be punched is already set by the machine. It's on this little guard here. So I will hold it in place and then I just push down. I'm going to just pull the thing out at the back. I do get like a little lever just to steady it. So I'll pop that in and then I'm going to punch down. Now, because it's handmade paper, it hasn't gone completely through because of the fibres. But can you see it has punched the holes? Just need to get rid of those fibres there with these scissors. There we go. So that's fine. So you can see the holes it's punched. Now, because I need more than the six holes it's given me, I need to punch the rest of this page. I need continuous holes. So I'm going to change my setting from D to B to continuous. So I push the lever down and slide it over. 
And what that does is give you a little divot here. Can you see? And that will determine how far out your pages go because what you're going to do is put your paper in and on the second hole in, so not the first one, on the second hole in, you're going to push that little divot through the piece of paper. Can you see it's coming out there? And that holds it in place and determines, now this little machine knows how far in your paper is. So that determines where my next set of six holes is going to be. Because it's measured with the little divot, I'm not going to punch through one hole and then slightly to the side of that hole making a really long rectangular hole it's going to do it perfectly for me so if i punch again down take that little divot out so can you see probably on the back it's measured them out perfectly for me there's no hole that's got then it's like a bigger hole next to it it's all it's all done perfectly and again you can use the same little divot to hold it in place again now I know that I'm getting right to the end of my paper now. If it was a really long piece of paper, you'd just move it down and move it down and move it down. But I'm going to do this again. Take it out the little divot. And there we are. I've got my perfect holes all the way along. So they're perfectly measured. So if I get another page, they are lined up. Can you see? Perfectly. Make it a sense? I hope so. So, <laughs> I will show you again. Uh, we'll do a proper tutorial on how to use this thing. But anyway, there we are. We've punched the hole. So that's that one. Next page. Um, a piece of Edith Holden wallpaper. Now, again, I had the idea of doing a pocket with this. Well, it would be a very skinny pocket. But let's do it. I'm going to do it the size of this poppy, I think. Just a nice little tuck and yeah I'm going to stitch all the way around again so I'm just going to take this to my machine just run a stitch all the way around just to hold that pocket in place pretty little poppy pocket and we've got that page as well um the next pages i think are all so we've got some coffee paper this coffee paper is a bit longer i think or just i think i'm just going to give that a deckled edge as well just to make sure it's going to fit and just because i like the deckled edge There we are. So that'll fit. And I've got some music paper. Ah, yes, music paper. Ah, now this is what I did with this one. Um, I've punched it knowing there's a little pocket there, so I'm going to stitch around this little pocket as well. So we've got a pocket at the bottom as opposed to them all being little side tucks. So that will go in as one page with a little bottom pocket there. Perfect. And I've got, oh yes, my embossed wallpaper sheets that I thought I'd put in as well because they're pretty. And then the last one is, oh, this is out of an old digital kit. I've had this for donkeys and I thought, you know what, I might as well put it in. Um, just trying to use up stash and stuff. So that, I think I'm good, just going to fold it. I don't think I'm going to create another pocket I think I'm going to fold it in pretty much as far as it'll go to give two decent sort of halves of that page and that's that so shall we bind shall we now I need to put my pages in order for a start I need to put this ruler away so I want Leave the back cover and the, the front cover for now. Um, I want this to be the very front. This is what I want the first thing to uh, to be when you see it. So I'm going to put it that way. 
Then we'll have some plainer paper. I just want to mix it up a little bit with the plain. Oh, that's a nice lined piece of paper, but I want a colour in between. Um, let's have... Let's have the Peter Rabbit paper next. Did you see that one? It's from a Beatrix Potter um, colour book. Colouring book. So I'm going to put you there. And then the lined paper next. And then we'll have, I think, one of these. A little flippy pockety thing. Some coffee paper. I'm going to have some vellum. And then next I want something pretty for the vellum to look at. So I think the poppy page page would be nice. Next. Then let's have let's have the receipt after that. Oh no, because I don't want that to catch. Now let's have a plain page. Where's that really thick paper? Let's get some of this in. Um, then we'll have a book page. Not really rhyme, any rhyme or reason to this. I just kind of want to, to get them in there. Then I think I'll have the receipt. Then we will have the big straw page. Let's have a colour then. Let's have some handmade paper. The boys book. Some sheet music, the one with the little pocket. Have the little flippy foldy page. Some pink paper. A bit more straw. Let's get some of these botanicals in there. In fact, I want a botanical a bit further back. Perhaps to break some of this up. Let's have a botanical there. Oh, is that behind? It's behind that one. So let's have it. Yeah, between there, I think. Um, I'm going to put the thicker piece behind that straw paper because it's quite thin. Um, my cat and my flowers. Another book page. Oh, this one was a music uh, pocket as well. Oh, let me just whiz a quick stitch around this because I'll, I'll keep that. Um, I've obviously been thinking ahead. It's a super rough stitch, but it's there. Yeah, little pocket. Pop that in. Um, I'm going to put the wallpaper page in before it, I think. And then a pink and then a botanical. The little music piece that and I want to finish with the same page now let me just think about this when we are binding we want our wire the closure of the wire to be at the back page so we put our front cover on the top and we imagine that our back cover is behind that we are going to flip it that way so that's how we're going to place it into our machine onto the comb and then bind it now that's quite thick actually so let's see it's thicker than i thought it was going to be um let's see what wire we're going to go for i've got a selection and oh i think it's going to be one of these now these are three quarter inch antique silver wires so let's use a one of them i think will be a good fit Now, obviously, we don't need the whole thing. So I'm just going to find my snips. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Did I do that right? One, two, three. 14 holes. So I need 14 of these. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I need to snip here because I'm keeping that hole. So let's get my snippies out. And obviously you can keep the other piece and use it for something else. Now, which one am I? There. There 
there we are so that's the piece we're going to use and then this piece um i'm going to make some top flippy scrap pads with these because i've got a couple of the smaller pieces now so i'm going to save that that's a project for another day shove that to the side for now right so we need to start let me think let me think let me think it needs to be like that so i'm going to start loading like this so that's my back page obviously they are different heights as well so don't worry about it as long as my cover that one's sticking out quite a bit isn't it as long as my cover covers then that's all right with me we'll find out anyway We'll just thread them one at a time. There's not very many on the bottom wire. I have cut enough, haven't I? Just seem to be a bit long, some of these pages, but there we are. Get on. I wonder if I put some of these in upside down. This is what I said before the covers are sort of measured. Hmm. Just check. No, I think I need to move these down, don't I? Hmm. No, appear to be working. Right, let's try this again, try this again, try this again. First things first. I have cut enough, haven't I? Yes. Right, okay, that's fine. Start again. I wonder if some of these I needed to trim lengthways. Oh no. Oh, it's because of how it's inset my pictures. Right, yeah, I am going to need to trim some. Okay, that's fine. Let's just trim off. Learning curve, learning curve. That. And then get that on there. Just going to measure it up with my front page. You see, every other page on my last few I've made was exactly the same size. So I had none of the sort of ambiguity of it all. Right, that's fine. So I'm going to use that as my sort of basis. So let's start again. I don't want them sort of really much above and below that if I can help it. You see, because they've been cut for ages, these as well. I think a lot of them have been turned upside down. So the short ones, obviously, it doesn't matter. But anything that's longer, I'm going to have to just sort of think ahead as to where it needs to be placed to make sure it's within the cover, if you see what I mean. Can you see that one? I think that's gonna need a bit of a trim at the top, isn't it? So let's just get rid of that top bit. work a bit better. There we are. Another pocket. I'm so pleased I found this machine though. I'm really chuffed with it. The seven it's something that in my one of my very first jobs I did um I worked in, in office services which basically meant that I did the binding. I'm just gonna trim this one. Um I did the binding for a solicitors um just sort of learning the ropes of, of office work. It was one of my very first jobs. And I used to use a, a huge wire binding machine. So I do know how, <laughs> believe it or not, I do know how to use them, but I, I was, um, 
I was 16 then. And now I'm, or was I 17 actually? And now I'm a little bit, a little bit older than that, slightly. So it was some time ago. I'm just gonna give this a bit of a trim as well, just to make sure we're all square, all good. Right, do you know what? I'm going to thread these and I'm going to come back to you because this must be dull. Back in a sec. Hi, right, so I'm back. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. So we've got everything thread on. That's the front cover. And then, as I said, we're imagining the back cover is on and we're going to flip it open because we want the closure to be hidden away at the back. Um, mainly so it lies flat when you open it. So there we are. Now, with this machine, with the newer versions, apparently you do... I don't, I don't know. If this should have come with one, but you're supposed to get sort of a card, um, a measuring card, which will show you how far out you need to screw this. Because what we're going to do, if you can, can you see that? So this little bit here, when you're punching your pages, you put them in the slot, punches come out. When you're squidging, if you do that, can you see the squidger comes out? So that's to squidge your wires, to bind your wires together. So a little card is meant to show me how tight I need to turn this press wall depending on my wire thickness. Now, I, it also has a little guide inside. Oh, hang on, somebody's at my door. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> start again. So if you can see, if I can turn the, cam the thingy right, there, these are, I can't get the thing underneath the camera. These are little measuring guides. So when I twiddle, can you see my wall is moving up with where the wires need to be? Now, I did it for the right thickness of wire previously, and it didn't seem to work. So I'm gonna have another go. So this is a three quarter inch, which tells me, if I move, that's the line for the three quarter inch. So we'll have a little go, but to, it didn't press it enough for my liking previously. Things were gonna fall out, and I, I have a feeling it'll be the same. But basically you put, so the, the mouth of your wires is flat, is how I prefer to do it. And you just sort of manipulate it a little bit. So you give it a little squeeze. You see, now it's still a bit open for my liking. So I'd, I'd squidge it in a little bit more. But we'll move it all the way along. Give it a good squidge. Yeah, not enough for me. So I'm just going to move it up slightly. Give it another... Squidge. If it goes wrong, you can always take it off and... Redo it. That's a bit better. So I'm just sort of manipulating the wires into place. And they're, I think they're closed enough. No, I don't think they're going to... We're going to lose any pages. So then you'll get out of the way. Swing that back around. All your pages to the front. And there's your book. So I'm quite pleased with that. I'm going to just give that another little squidge there. Just to round them up a little bit more. But yeah, I'm pleased with that. So there's our book. And have you, as you can see, every page lays flat. And the... The unsightly bit is here at the back, nice and hidden, as it should be. Oh, I like that. So what I'll do, obviously, it's just a dead basic one, is this. I'm going to pop this on Etsy, um, probably tomorrow, um, which I don't know when I'm going to post this video, hopefully. Tonight being Monday, so this might be up on Tuesday. So if anybody's interested in this, I'm going to pop some ephemera, obviously, in the little pockets. Um, I'm going to go through and add just some... I have some, um, as I say, the collage tags that I've been working on. So I do have some of these that I'm going to pop through. Plus some of the little goodies in there as well. So if anybody's interested in this, just hop on and take a look on my Etsy shop. But yay, chuff with that. Very good. Just being careful with that one page. I'm just, it's the only page I'm just a little bit funny about, just in case, it's just because it's a little bit flimsy, but... The flip out is nice and sturdy now, so that should stay put, hopefully. Um, cool. 
happy with that. I'm going to leave this video here. I am going to now just start filming on my next one straight away. So, um, but I think we'll leave this video here for, for the, the construction of this. Um, and I'm going to make a start on the Halloween journal and I'm going to do a few Halloween packs as well. So um, they're on the next one to come if you're interested in, in checking those out. Um, otherwise, I'll leave it there. Okay, bye.